Right, hey guys, how are we doing? Back on another video from Nux Tech. I mean, this is a 900k subscriber special video. This is... I read this and I'm like, wow, okay. This is a rather specific list, but the 10 best episodes in anime. <laughs> and I'm just like, where do I even start in trying to even think of where he's going with this? So, no clue, not much of an intro to this. We're just going to get into the meat and potatoes of the video. And see what Nux's favourite top 10 episodes in anime are. It is not going to be far off a million now, is it? Like, it's... Can't wait to see that special. But until then, let's get into this one. Damn, 900k, that's actually really scary. That's a big really number. A really big one. Thank you all yep. so much for helping me hit this 900,000 hmm. subscriber milestone. Delicate Sanji comment again. I didn't think I'd uh, ever reach when I started this. And getting close to a million, it's actually really really terrifying. My next milestone special, as I've promised, is in fact going to be my top 100 anime characters of all my time, and God. I've already started working on it because that is going to be a undertaking of massive proportions. Big. And this time that I wanted to big. talk about my top 10 episodes in anime. I figure that's an interesting milestone mm. special, it's another personal one that you guys enjoy that I do, and it's something that I'm very happy to indulge you in, because it's rare that I get to talk about just really personal opinions and what makes me love anime and mm -hmm. what I love about it. So, teary-eyed thank you aside because I'm really feeling it this time and I'm getting Aww. a little jittery getting close to a million it's really really scary I thank imagine that's very, quite nerve wracking <laughs> Jesus and here are my top 10 episodes in anime before beginning there are 8 episodes in the honorable mentions that I would like to mention to you right, right now because they are very close for making it into my top 10 and they are all very awesome so One Piece episode 236 okay. is the episode it always starts with a One Piece thing and I personally think it is easily my favorite episode in One Piece not my favorite moment in One Piece per se even though it's up there but anime adaptation wise being that the anime is worse than the manga the anime did a fantastic job adapting Luffy vs. Usa it's a massive Massive turning point in the story. Yeah. Tears were shed when it came to this battle, I tell you. So, massive props. One Piece episode 236 for being goddamn amazing. The next honorable mention I wanted to talk about is... <laughs> <laughs> episode 56. Now, episode 56 oh my God, of is the episode course. that Fuhrer King Bradley fights a tank. To yes. the war. It's where he takes <laughs> on the tank and proceeds to fight Buccaneer, Greed, and Chinese Ninja Dude. And it is All also time, in that yes. very same episode 56 that we get Hohenheim's flash back after he left Xerxes and was saved by FMA's Chinese people. So, this episode was packed, and I goddamn loved it. It's not in my on. top ten, but it's definitely close. Next, I wanted to talk about Madoka Magica episode ten. Now, if you've been following me on this Babe, journey this for long enough, you know that I am before. a huge fan of Madoka <laughs> Magica, one? and it's episode Madoka 10 Magica. that really solidified that <laughs> for me. Granted, the Madoka Magica <laughs> Rebellion movie is what made it this one of my made top ten anime episodes in anime. This episode made me fall in love yes. with the anime completely. And is it that good? It's a massive spoiler since a lot of people didn't watch Madoka Magica, I highly recommend you watch Madoka huh. Magica. That is so but bizarre. If you did watch it, I will fill you <laughs> in which episode it is. It's the episode where you get to learn all mention. of Homura's past. Homura being my favorite okay. character in Madoka Magica, one of my favorite female characters in anime, and you will definitely see her by my My girlfriend's had two teeth pulled out this afternoon as well, and she's feeling oh rather miserable, so for her to chirp up for that, I'm quite happy about. She was really I love you, babe. Love and you it's in my freaking mind completely <laughs> inverting everything yeah. I understood about her character, and legitimately everything I thought of this story. Next, I wanted to talk about Bleach, Bleach. episode 212. So, Which Bleach episode 206 to 212 was 110 years in the past, featuring... Kisuke Urahara and Aizen, as well as what became of the Visor. Oh, of and course, that yes. Field. Now, it's easily one of my favorite arcs in Bleach, probably my second favorite after the Soul Society arc, and mm. episode 212, where we actually began to really see the holification process everywhere. Yeah, we how it see started, why Urahara yeah. was banished, and we got to see why Aizen is so terrifying. I think episode 212 of Bleach was goddamn fantastic. It was, and it, I know yeah, that I'm remembering it now, and I'm like, yo, Bleach, like, in the yes. I don't really remember it that clearly. Watch episode 206 to 212, and your passion for the series will be completely reignited. Yep. So I love Bleach episode 212. Next, I wanted to talk about Attack on Titan episode Ooh. 53. So this episode is in Attack on Titan season 3 part 2 and it's the episode that Erwin Oh, really, it gets everyone really to charge against the Beast Titan. Before charging into what seems to be their death. Like, it doesn't oh look like they God. survived that. Try not to spoil anything. And they charge towards the Beast Titan while making their entire army literal human decoys for Levi's one yep. attack. Erwin is my favorite character in Attack on he Titan. He was so... Attack on Titan episode 3 really hits home. 
this is when you know the series is a goddamn masterpiece, and it only, believe it or not, gets better from there on. Next, I wanted to talk about Seven, Seven Deadly, Deadly Sins, Sins, episode 42. Episode 42 is the episode where we are introduced to Escanor, and oh my honestly, God, that's I do amazing. not remember how hype I was for almost anything else that came close to this. When the Lion's Sin of Pride was introduced to the series, I kid you not, right when I finished the episode, I legit started it right again. That very moment. Yeah? Oh, do you I do? Is a phenomenal character. And his introduction, just completely slapping Galand, was one of the most riveting that goddamn class, things I've ever seen. Fair. Episode 42 with Seven Deadly Sins with a goddamn masterpiece. That's back when the adaptation was still solid instead of the really shaky shiz going on right now. Next, episode 13 of Made in I Abyss. I need to Made watch this Abyss anime is so anime bad. Of all time. Definitely in my top 15. And honestly, if not for episode 13 of Made in Abyss, it would not be that high. It would huh. probably be in the 20s. But episode 13 hit me so goddamn hard. We got to learn about Nanachi, her past, and, and how she's transformed. And and what she is. At my heart is that what it was? Because no I have slight understanding of the story. Turned the show from a fantastic series to an absolute it is, isn't it? And believe it or not, the following arc in the manga is even better and darker. And now the final honorable mention is Fairy Tale. Of course, that has to be Fairy Tale. So <laughs> after the seven-year time skip type thingy, and Fairy Tale was in massive shambles. Episode 124 is when the main gang came back to Fairy Tale and began to restore our faith in our home and our guild. I love episode 124. Whenever I need an uplifting experience, whenever I just yeah, want to feel a real genuine pride for things around me, you just hop out episode 124 of fairy tale and you begin to well up in tears because your family is back i know a lot of people make fun of fairy tale i did make an hour video on it so i feel like i have full right to praise it without repercussion and uh if you don't like my takes watch the hour-long video and then let me know your opinion so that wraps up my honorable mention right, so let's get into the top video. 10 i will be going slightly potatoes. slower for the top 10 and i say slightly with emphasis because i do not want the video to be like an hour long i'm already dreading the million sub special but i very much appreciate it so i didn't want to like leave out episodes I love just for the sake of, you know, making my voice work easier. So, my tenth favorite episode in all of anime is Death Note, episode two. Welcome yeah. to the massive landscape of mature anime, and it doesn't start any earlier than episode two of Death Note. So, mm. I feel like for most people, you get into the anime watching, you know, Naruto, Bleach, One Piece, Dragon Ball, the really hype action shonens that get you to love this medium, and then when you begin to branch out and you realize that, holy crap, there's some really dark shiz out there, you begin to stay and start acting searching out anime as opposed to other forms of media to indulge in. Death Note Episode 2 did that for a lot of people, and it is clear to see why. Death Note Episode 1 was very much of a setup episode. It was not you one of my like, favorite where is it going? Of all anime, <laughs> but Death Note Episode 2 knocked the early storytelling completely out of the park. This is the episode where L gets introduced, and L tracks down Light to such a pinpointed location. And this is where you realize the where the store's starts, going. And our <laughs> protagonist slash villain gets this ridiculously broken ability to kill anyone in the world no matter who they are no matter what they're doing as long as you know their name and face this is an untraceable unkillable supernatural weapon in and a he natural manages setting. to and track him down to have Nearly. this guy with that immense power what can go against this guy so immediately it's understood from the very beginning that there's going to be a massive clash in ideology between what actually defines justice that is very clear but to think that someone actually has the mental capacity to not only outsmart light but to track down an yeah, untrackable like, what weapon is going that blew on? my mind and not only that but the immoral steps taken by L by having a puppet this guy Lind L yeah. Taylor yeah. take his place make believe he's L so he can test out exactly the limitations of Light's ridiculous power is absolutely terrifying he played Light like a goddamn fiddle. fiddle and not only that <laughs> I but he's love not it. the Melia most morally reference. righteous <laughs> individual on the entire planet he used an inmate that's true but he used an inmate as literal bait to die he was I on death row so he was like he's gonna die he's gonna, 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 gonna die fascinating in this series as is the brilliant psychological tactics taken by either side to survive. Light was cocky, and that's why he got caught. He made some really stupid choices because he had way too much faith in this ridiculous yeah, power. Yeah, was like, that he come possessed. on, no one's gonna and get me. The better of Ooh, because of okay. So, the reason why I absolutely love episode two of Death Note is because of how hard it hits home the mm, psychological mm. narrative that anime has the potential to possess, and also right in the beginning of the series. You it's don't have to right wait the start, yeah. Like it's like a lot of shows wait for, for a few episodes before like, it kicks in with what they're actually doing. Dark Death Note hits hard from right the beginning, man. Like, in episode ah. two, and exactly how twisted and beautiful this rotten world can be. So, when I am trying to introduce anime to someone, it obviously depends on the individual. I would either take the action shonen route, you know, introducing them with Death Note is the one thing I recommend to everyone if they're not into anime. 
Arthur. And Zen go from Sure, that. showing them the first two episodes of Death Note has never failed to surprise nope. me at how well it works. It does. Nothing like, it's in the first exactly how I do it. of a show <laughs> blows your mind like that. Watch Death now, Note, the and then watch Full Metal Alchemist. Spirit, dude. After, right after right a minute, it's like, ah, they're in. talking about Code Geass. Because I've actually watched Code Geass before Death Note. So with that said, my ah, that's interesting, favorite episode I didn't. in all of anime is Naruto Episode 4. That's what? right, there's a lot of crazy stuff that goes on in Naruto. And Naruto is not considered episode, a psychological masterpiece really, anime. Like, but the uh, bell test in Episode oh, 4 Naruto okay. rings true as one of my favorite anime Amazing, okay, cool. We watched forever. Naruto was easily one of my gateway anime. I say yeah. one of my gateway anime because there are many things that got me into different aspects of anime. But Naruto got me into the shonen phase. Hell yeah! And Go ahead, really lad. Naruto was episode four. The bell, was test. The bell test. There is oh nothing I've God. seen prior to Naruto that even came close to the absolute badassery of Kakashi. Yeah. This legend who doesn't get nearly this enough mad credit lad. these days <laughs> blew my freaking mind. This mad lad not only there embodied you know. all of them, not only did it with a bored expression, not only was able to Just do it while didn't like he board, cared. Which is very read a book twist whilst right there, doing but it. made it completely clear that not only is he an individual that's suffering too, not only does he have his own burdens and past, not only does that freaking stone that contains the names of all of his friends that have already deceased blow your mind that this character is still working for the Lee village with his whole heart and soul, but yep. he hammers in an episode four that those who break the rules are scum. That's they are scum. But those who don't help their friends are the worse than scum. Naruto yeah. is an entirely goal-oriented story, which is really what sucked me into it in the beginning. What I love about Shonen especially being that American TV does not really do this is that you have no. a whole life story of someone who wants to become the Hokage and at the end of the day he becomes the Hokage and you get to look back at all the massive journeys they've taken throughout in order to get to where they got this is point A it's where you're introduced to a real legendary ninja. Kakashi yep. is nowhere near the top of the world at this point. But in his verse, he is nowhere decent, near man. recognized as the strongest. But he is not only outmatching Sakura, Sasuke, and Naruto, but he's an entirely different league. Both he in body really and his levels His mindset above. is completely different than theirs, and it's something they have to adapt to. This world is seemingly infinite at this point, and the adventures that will be had are brimming with excitement. The bell test is a test that they were not designed to win, but it's a no, test they that meant. they actually one through yeah. not following the rules. I positively love episode four of Naruto. No the one character tell building between them was amazing as well, where it's like the tied up on the posts. My eighth like, favorite mm. episode in all of anime is Log Horizon episode nine. Uh, really? Oh, Words okay, I can understand this. Okay, I, Log Horizon for me is like, oh, but this, so okay. If it's, is one of my favorite if it's where he manages to trick everyone into like not realizing he's purchased the whole... But it's definitely right, okay. amazing. A lot of it is instead of just your average guy who gets hacked abilities become freaking overpowered in a man. Where he buys everything without the... Yeah, yeah. Aspect okay, okay, of, okay. You know, okay, these okay, immortal okay. reincarnating beings popping into a world that already has a functioning ecosystem. Uh, hello? That's what's interesting about an isekai, and episode 9 encompasses that very well. Shirue very much grasps the gravity of the situation. Shiro. Shiro is an absolute Shiro. bad lad. So, this massive plan that he has for the last several episodes in the making that you don't understand exactly what the hell he's doing until episode 9, where he doesn't just slap you with it over the head, but he blows the minds of every top dog in all of the Elder Tale game that they are trapped in. So, with that said and done, I will now express to you exactly nothing about what went on, because I don't like spoiling really big no, things. Watch Log I Horizon if you haven't. No, if I'm right. Is my I think I am. Anime. My seventh favorite I episode right. in all of anime is episode 24 of Fate Zero. This oh. is the episode where Kiritsugu fights Kirei, oh. and then Kiritsugu so manages God. to get his hands on the Grail for just a wee bit of time in yep. order for the Grail to completely tear apart his mind. That's right, this oh. is the episode that Fate Zero comes into fruition, and it's exactly why I love it. Not only so is Kiritsugu good. versus Kirei one of my favorite anime it's fights It's an amazing ever, fight, it's so good of a fight. You even put it in there, yes. But the beauty of Fate Zero is you have this massive battle royale. You have seven masters. Who each Baby, don't listen. Don't listen. From the past in order to help them in this We're talking about Phase Zero. Don't listen. The don't tactics listen. used are no. amazing. The battles implemented are fantastic. The fights are so good. My favorite anime of all time. I cannot stop expressing how much I love this show. Everything about it. The music, the soundtrack, yep. the animation, the characters, the ideology. Oh, and speaking everything. of the ideologies, every single master and every single servant has their own reason why they're fighting in this war. Yep. That's 14 opposing ideologies. They all ideologies have a reason for wanting that grail. Other, and each one of them is legitimate, except for the psychopaths, which I guess are fascinating in their own right. And this episode 24 is the episode that after Kitty 
Ritsugu after pain and suffering in order to get this far in the yep. war manages to get his ideology absolutely shredded. This is where it's you just realize like, that no. no ideology is correct without incorporating every other ideology to some extent as well. Every ideology has validity. And that every fight is, is wrong, so freaking good. Dies. Okay, not everyone dies. That was just for the melodrama. But episode 24 of Fate Zero, which is also a spoiler, will be blowing your mind. The fight's you incredible. Zero, the fight is one of the best fights I've ever Fate seen in an anime ever. Damn it. Not just for like episode 9, like Log Horizon. Second season of Log Horizon is not the greatest in the world, even though it's an amazing easy guy. Fate Zero is legit one of the greatest anime of all time. You are yep. burning yourself if you're not watching it. I'm telling it's you, please watch it. It's even better when you watch the limited Blade Works. <laughs> episode 24 is my seventh favorite episode in all of anime. Now, my personal opinion, and that's why my girlfriend's watching it that way. Screw you guys that are you otherwise i'm right now but it's episode four of vinland saga oh vinland saga, whoa absolutely I, babe we need to watch vinland saga there's <laughs> so, so many videos i'm watching where it's like vinland saga this vinland saga that part five no attack on titan season three part two as far as original anime goes i don't see any of them at all and i'm including promised neverland demon slayer and shield hero whatever the else you're interested in none of them come close to vinland saga whoa. a lot of people don't know about this gem because it's only amazon prime on amazon prime but uh don't let that stop you bitches and that's the annoying thing about it as well, because I have Amazon like, Prime, we can just watch it. <laughs> I don't I'm want to sorry. Tell you exactly it's like, you know, from One Piece? Imagine all the epicness that went into the grand finale of Whitebeard's Marine Ford act, and all that shiz is in episode four of Vinland Saga. If that is not enough praise, I don't know what is. I mean, I can't really understand so the concept there, man, because I've still not watched One Piece, but okay. Thor's is an absolute badass and one of my favorite anime characters even though the guy only has like a goddamn 15 minutes of screen time and like you know the whole story his philosophy apparently like this is the thing babe every character in this regardless of how much screen time they have are memorable and that's good writing yeah has a tale about vikings and don't let that scare you it still has that anime spark that makes it amazing it is a story of fantastic characters i'm only on like episode 13 and i can already list you four characters that are some of my favorite characters of all time, all time. Thor's, that's Thor crazy Kel, Orphan, Thor and Kelly Atlanta also you're going on about the last time man lovable and fascinating characters i've seen in a long time and yes that's only within the first 13 episodes of the show from what i hear about the manga it only gets better from this point on episode four of vinland saga that war stones in blackpool had all the vinland saga manga in hardback they know blackpool know where it's at at least watch the first four episodes it will blow your mind my fifth favorite here we go halfway original science game big spoiler and that sucks I can't really talk about it. Yeah, that's right. I didn't realize until exactly is so right good, though. That read the manga, though. So good. The greatest choice for me to pick ever. It's a topic I'm not watching the anime. I've read the manga, and that was like, ah, later on, blew my mind. Absolutely blew my mind. Early on episodes is just basically my endorsement to watch the show. But episode 22 of Steins Gate, which is the second last episode. Oh, oh, is a oh, anime oh that I emotional. Can enjoy I'm trying to pick what it is. In the beginning, I understand why you think it may be a little slow. It's developing the characters. It's almost slice of life in this really weird setting of this mad scientist who in Kiyoma who somehow manages to accidentally create a time machine with a microwave and a mobile phone text messages to the past yes so they end up messing up a whole bunch of stuff they end up saving some lives causing some deaths stuff goes really wrong yeah. at certain points in the show and in order to remedy the whole situation in order to get everyone out of the massive mess that they managed Ooh. to fall into Oin Kyoma creates a perfect time loop in episode 22 I don't really feel like that in itself is a spoiler but yeah. if he does it that is the massive spoiler but I will not be it's talking it's sad about episode will go down forever as one of my favorite episodes in anime. I'm, Heck, I know what he's talking about now. When it comes I'm to time loops, the there are very, very few that I feel like really blow my mind and do that job right. Oh. I love Steins Gate and episode 22 is a goddamn... I only read the manga. On to my fourth yeah. favorite episode of all time! Episode 51 of Hunter x Hunter. <gasps> so I Where really are we going? wanted to talk about episode 131 of Hunter x Hunter, episode 131 being where Gold What's this? 51? Rico, but I think I liked episode 51 better. Episode 51 is the Requiem of the Phantom Troop. The York New Arc and the Chimera and oh. are one of my favorite arcs in all of them. And I feel like nothing in the York New Arc is as mind-blowing as this Requiem of the Phantom Troop. After right. spoilery things happen, the Phantom Troop, which is essentially the Hunter Hunter version of, of the Phantom Troop, is yep. <laughs> cool. In fact, far cooler than the Akatsuki. <laughs> well, I guess that's arguable. I kind of like the Akatsuki a lot too, but not the point of this video at Phantom all! Phantom Troop is so cool. is, when something happens, this 
Silent Requiem, where they cause absolute hell in the city of York New, which is not at all based off the city of New, New York, York. Because as you know, <laughs> we're New and York are flipped to create the city of York New. A completely different thing, not at they all taking different. inspiration from New York. I'm glad I managed to get that misconception out of the because way. To try were so and hip hop confused. around spoilers, the heart and soul of this seemingly soulless organization hits really, really hard. Seeing the absolute terror that they produce and this silent lament that they, they are all go incredible. through their minds are all really connected on this. And you need Rolo, to watch Hunter standing Hunter. on top of a roof with his hands outstretched, <laughs> listening to this silent oh. symphony of death taking place in this <gasps> You are! <laughs> all as a form of paying respect for it. She constantly surprises me. I love, I so love the Phantom Troop and I love Prolo, <laughs> and I feel like this encapsulates everything that I like about them. It's this mass of chaos, but it's this also fascinating family that's traveling around doing all of this. Yeah, like on they seem hand, a lot of them always evil, but they always look out for each other. other. But on the other hand, their hearts are so in tuned with one another, it's terrifying, but it's also beautiful. And it's yeah. this terrifying beauty that makes the Requiem of the Phantom so goddamn amazing. So that's why episode 51 of Hunter x Hunter is my fourth Fair favorite enough. episode in I'll all of anime. Fair enough, I'll give you that. My third favorite episode in all of anime is is episode 36 of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, <gasps> Diamond is Unbreakable. Kirid Queen, Dyson, no Pakudan, Bites is Oh, Nico. when it starts doing it this. Ah. Oh. You know, when the uh, To Kill the Queen's I technique comes I in where it's like, my breath for an entire episode of he's trapped like every time the kid goes out. I've mentioned I just try and stop it. Is one of my yeah. in anime, oh, in my top god, how amazing is that? Yeah. Really so yeah. He develops so this good. really terrifying so ability. Bites is a dozen! Who does do it? There you go. And his stand, Kidded Kree, has never been more terrifying. You do not know how the heroes will actually get themselves out of this situation, and Kira finally feels invincible. The you constantly feel it. It's like, how are they gonna is about a guy like get out of it? A serial killer. No. And goes around doing some really horrible shit. Despite all of that, being that you're watching the third half of the story almost from his perspective, he almost becomes the seeming protagonist of what's going on, even though hmm. he's this horrible individual. He is extremely meticulous in nature, and if you compare him to other antagonists in JoJo's, you see why his being meticulous actually matters so much. Yes. You have a guy like Dio, who's almost unstoppable. He's this regenerating vampire Yeah, but he just doesn't blind, care people that he exists. Teleport, laserize, free stuff, stop time, ridiculously powerful, control his intestines to wrap around people and kill them, take over people's bodies. And, fun fact, he's also immortal. Yeah, you have a guy like that. You have people like the Pillar Men, who are also mini gods Very true, in the world. when you compare the... the they've had an so like OP Kiryu stuff, and then... Kage, who is far weaker than Jotaro. In fact, that one time he bumped into Jotaro, yeah. Jotaro nearly killed him, and he only barely escaped due to wit alone. Yeah. Kira is terrifying, and not at all because... It's a very realistic very antagonist. He's terrifying because he's sneaky, yeah. because he's meticulous, and because he's really messed up in the People head. People like him can't One of my three exist. favorite yes. villains. Why does this always happen? Take the stands but away. Last, <laughs> he could be a real person. Four, watching him cover his tracks, watching him make progress in life, just trying to live a nice, happy, simple life, not being caught and killed, he finally develops Bites Zadusto, a ridiculously broken technique that he can actually step out into the daylight. And I am telling I wanted a high you, five, but it's okay. Entire episode, every time I watched it. We fist warning, I watched All right. it a lot of times. I don't love you, I'm just worried. You, you said your teeth pulled out, and it's nice to see you open to do stuff. This episode was fully reflected by yours truly. I love episode 36 of JoJo. So good. Before, and it's my third favorite episode in all of anime. My Number second two. favorite episode in all of anime is episode 305 of Gintama. Something you see, I know I just about freaking out of me, man. You talk about it every freaking time you do something. Gintama apparently is amazing. It's funny, it references other things, but... Okay, let's see. Of the past was also honored. We got to learn about Gintoki's past, why Takatsugi hates him so much, and a little mm. bit about Gintoki's former sensei, Shoyo. All of this would be a huge spoiler, but I don't know. I kind of feel like I want to spoil it to let you know exactly how awesome it is. never spoils anything, babe. At the same time, <laughs> while I'm watching Gintama. So feel free to skip a couple of minutes into the future, because I'm not going to spoil a lot, but I will spoil something. I'll go on. You know exactly I'm not going to watch it. There's like so, so many episodes so of it. There were four guys that we get to know right now. There was Gintoki, Katsura, Sakamoto. And Takatsuki. Each of them in the past Takatsuki was the guy who fought in, in the rebellion in order to protect Japan. And at that point is, about, yeah. after they lost the war, they have all taken very different life paths. 
Sakamoto, became an intergalactic merchant and made a buttload of money and has like a goddamn fleet of ships. Yep. Katsura <laughs> becomes a rebel, continuing the rebellion that's failed, evading the police, so and whatever. Carrying on He's with a goofball, his and I love Katsura. And Sakamoto, to their complete entirely, they're both completely hilarious, amazing characters, and actually deep once you actually get to know them. Gintoki blazes about his daily life and protects everything within his sword's reach, and then you yes. have Kakadu. He's a sword, he just carries now, a wooden stick around with him all the time. Most of them get along pretty well with each other. Except Gintoki and Takatsuki cannot see eye to eye. They hate each other. And they kind of want each other dead for a lot of the series. And the reason why is revealed in the flashback in episode 305. So they were all students under this master Shoyo. And they loved Shoyo like a father. Just like Shoyo loved them like children. Shoyo right. looked at them as basically his own sons. and treated I think them I saw a clip of this, but I'm not going to... Loved hmm, them that way. Hmm, cared for them that way. And they regarded him in exactly the same fashion. In the war, it was a point where Takatsuki and several others were captured. And so was Shoyo. And they essentially gave them an ultimatum that, yes, they will all die unless a certain something is done. And that certain something does come to pass. Gintoki decapitates his sensei Shoyo what? in front of Takatsu. And from that moment on, that hatred is born. This is revealed in this episode. This really hits home in Whoa. this episode. Because this is the final battle between Gintoki and Takatsu. It's all their passion and rage that they've been building up over the past many, many years. Oh. Coming to clash again once against the ghosts from the past coming together to fight now in order to move to the future. And this episode is a massive climax to character arcs that have spanned over hundreds of episodes and That's your episode second favorite of episode is easily of my second time. favorite episode in Mala Man. wasn't and one. Honestly, I really wanted to put it in first place, but first place holds, believe it or not, a place even deeper in my heart. Oh. Even though I love episode God, what is this? It doesn't, for me at least, hold a candle passion to episode 25 of Code Geass R2, the final episode of Code Geass, and in my opinion, this mate, is not yeah, only mate, yeah, mate, you know what this is about, this is the greatest episode in all of that, obviously the ending of he's the series, done it all, he's taken over well, everything, he rules the world, the ending to any and then he all time in dies, the <laughs> yeah, it's my favorite screen. episode ever, I wish I could tell screen. you, yeah, it's I like, like dog, oh, I'm gonna say spoilers, so just skip ahead a little bit, no, 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 not enough people actually heed those warnings and skip ahead, and I am not ruining this for you. Code Geass is one of my favorite anime. So I've just... <laughs> my favorite anime. <laughs> he falls, he's not even saying what happens. <laughs> 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 oh my god, well done. <laughs> and literally any description of what goes on is spoiler to something. This episode blew my mind and continues to blow it. It's that good though. <laughs> Pretty much yearly. Every time I finish watching, I'm not fist bumping you for that. The only thing oh, I can think of is funny. the ending of Pokemon. So it when I first got into I thought he was going to. Pokemon, Digimon, Yu Gi Oh! And then eventually got into things like Naruto, which led me into Bleach and other oh. shows. And then I was like, eh, what is the next anime I should watch? And I picked up Code Geass. I managed to pick up Code Geass. Code Geass is amazing, though, isn't it? Anything else that was trendy at the time. And. You've caused Play C2, haven't you? Yeah, I still have it. I have never seen a story like this. I have never seen an ending Code like Geass is incredible. And I can't believe it's continuing now with these movies. movies. I've not seen the first one. I haven't seen any. The absolute king no, it's, there's only one movie out. Oh. It's like a 10-year project. Apparently there's going to be two so, more movies so and something else going on. I hope you did enjoy it. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe if you yeah, enjoyed. Because these are my 18 favorite episodes in anime. And feel free to join the fan base. We're over 900k strong right now. which is It's scary. so hitting a million before the end of the year. Like, it's subscriber growth. It's so huge. very daunting task indeed. I really genuinely thank you for everything all of you have done. Like, it blows me away that we're right here right now. At 800k, I wasn't freaking out that much. Delicate Samji's like, comments know, like, keep oh, getting poor like, for his videos, and, and that's a big deal for me because, really like, he was a, and a million's like, big really voice big actor in, like, Give Up videos and stuff in the past. That's class. Really, really Link is in the description of my Twitter. Feel free to follow me there. To my subreddit, feel free to join. To my Patreon, feel free to pledge. To my merch, feel free to pick some up. To my Twitch, feel free to follow. And to the Rant Cafe podcast that we upload once a week talking about... Which I've nearly been a guest on four times, and I've had to say no every time, and now I've not been invited on since. Feel free to let me know your favorite episode. It's never happening. So stay weird, fam. I'm never gonna get invited on again, babe. Yeah, you did it as well. Oh man, I wish you were on camera right now. But that was cool. That was a really cool video. I'm I'm so happy to see you up and smiling as well, baby. I'm, I'm, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. She's had teeth pulled out today, guys. Like, and she's up and she's trying. I am to, hella moody. She 
yeah, I'm not making woman jokes right now, but uh, yeah, some interesting episodes there. It's like, so for me, I've never seen Jintama. Want to check it out, but like again, it's one of those where it's like it's got like three hundred something episodes. You know, it's not like one of those where it's like with. See, I feel like if you try and get someone into an, an anime and it's got like a hundred and twenty episodes, that's okay. Do you know what I mean? But then when you more than double that and give them like, look, it's only got like three hundred and fifty episodes. It's like that's a lot to, <laughs> to get through. Like One Piece is a lot to get through. So I don't know. Yeah, but some decent stuff on there and I um the Full Metal did you were you awake for the Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood episode? No. So it was the episode where Bradley takes on the tank and then fights over. Oh yeah, yeah. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah. You, yeah. 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 I agree with that. Yeah. yeah. Such a good episode. And then he also mentions as well the fact that he liked the episode because you get the flashback of um their dad. Yeah. When he gets picked up on the camel and taken away. Yeah. So there's a lot of, th th there's that going on, but there was more backstory being brought in as well, so it was adding a lot to it. Yeah, that's cool. I can't wait for his million special. That's going to be, like, because I think it's like his top 100 anime characters. Mm. So I imagine that being like an hour long, um, hour long video. That was, that was boss. I'm so glad you woke up for the last bit. I love it when you're in the background, like, to give you <laughs> input, because it's, it's just fun and... You, you've got a Star of Gintama anyway because you, you need to watch uh, watch or read One Piece. I do need to. How far into it are you, baby? Right, thank you guys very much for watching. <laughs> what did you guys think of that? <laughs> what did you guys think of this? Click like, subscribe already, leave comments down below, let me know how you watch it because in future videos I'll but see you guys. What do you think of the first few it's pages? all of you guys. Next time. Bye. Bye.